Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and today we're unboxing the Emotiva UPA 500 5 channel amplifier. Now, you might want to ask yourself, what the hell do I need a 5 channel 500 watt amplifier for? Well, I guess you'll just have to stay tuned and figure it out, right? Right. Well, you guys made it through the intro, so I figure I can clue you into what this is all about. It's for you racing simulator fans. I've been making you guys wait forever for another good video. And I'm going to make you wait a fair bit longer. <laughs> but anyways, just to get your mouth salivating, I've got five of these butt kicker LFE 250 watt max power handling audio transducers. Now, if you don't know what an audio transducer is, uh, it makes you have to piss your pants. Let's just say that. One of these will vibrate your ass so hard that you'll be running the bathroom. I've got five of them. And the guys over at SimVibe also modified these so that they're specifically designed for a simulator application. They got special foam inside of them and the range is, is perfect for using the SimVibe software. Check out my other video on SimVibe to see more information on that. But what I needed was an amplifier capable of feeding these beasts. These guys require a constant feed of very, very low amplified frequencies, which a lot of amplifiers blow up when they try. And I have it on good authority that this is the only amp for the job. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. Again, big huge thanks to Emotiva for sending this over. And this is going to be in every one of the future simulator videos once we get it installed. So here's the manual for it sitting right on top. The UPA 500. Now it's a five channel amplifier. The thing I really like about this is it's like having five little individual amplifiers inside. You basically run a different set of RCAs for each one of the amp channels and then out to the audio transducer. So it's super straightforward. It's not like your big Pioneer Kenwood 5.1 home entertainment system. It's like this is just pure amplifier. And uh, I've had a lot of people tell me that it's an amazing amplifier. So I am super excited to have one in my possession. So let's go ahead and pull it out of the box here. Uh, it's probably a little bit of a bigger unboxing than I usually do on my desk. Shouldn't even call it a desk, it's more of a dinner table. All right, get rid of that box. Whee! All right, all right, so we got it out of the box. Comes with a power cable. Looks like a pretty beefy power cable too. And it also comes with, looks like a little mono uh, looks like a 1 8 to 1 8 mono jack. We'll have to figure out what that is. So put that aside. And it looks like the amplifier comes in a nice cover. You can come off here. Let's go ahead and remove that. Now this thing's really heavy. This is a, that's a sign of good amplifiers. This thing weighs a lot more than even my big 7.1 Yamaha receiver that I have downstairs. This thing is beefcake. And that's what you want in an amplifier. So let's go ahead and turn around and take a look at the back here. You can see you have five independent channels. You have a mono in, and then you have the positive and negative heading out to the speaker. So it's like having five individual amplifiers, and it looks like, uh, oh, this cable right here is a trigger. So looking at the, we'll look at the manual, but this looks like it's uh, for actually triggering the amplifier to turn on from, because it is, it is an intermediate amplifier. You'd still have a digital analog converter that would be, you know, creating the audio stream. And then this would just be amplifying it. Um, this is a monster amp. I might actually have to pick up another one of these myself just to drive my, uh, my speakers in the man cave. Cause this is just, this is, this is beautiful. So let's go ahead and turn around. looks like we got a power button, the standard looking banana plug connectors. So it looks like you can also feed a wire in through the side. That's all really standard. And you can turn the status LEDs on and off too. So if you if it's too bright and you want to dumb it down, like for your home theater system, ugh, this thing's like lifting a cinder block. Ugh. And here's the front. You can see it's just very, very simple looking design. And uh, looks like it's got a protective coating on the screen there. Channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, and standby. So that's all there is to it. This thing's sole purpose in life is to take in a line level signal and pump it up. And that's exactly what I need to drive these little butt kicker units. Now that I've shown you the amp and some of its features, I mean, that's the cool thing about it is its simplicity is what makes it beautiful. This thing is supposed to be a powerhouse. This thing puts out 
uh, 100 watts per channel of, I mean, really, really clean, pure power, which is what you want when you're driving these transducers. You don't want a lot of, you don't want a lot of noise added to the signal. And uh, you also want to make sure that you don't have massive fluctuations in the power throughout the frequency range. Cause I mean, it'll, it'll damage these, damage the amplifier. But from what I've read online, audio transducers put the harshest loads on amplifiers because they're driven by exclusively by a lot of bass. So when you're using stuff like Sim Vibe software that's just designed to, to generate constant bass, you know, some amplifiers just can't take it. So now to tell you guys about what I'm doing. All right, for those of you guys that made it this far in the video, I'm gonna clue you into what this whole project's about. Now, you guys, if you haven't seen my Oboto Racing Simulator, go check it out, my videos, I'll link them down in the description. Um, but I, I put a butt kicker on my Oboto Revolution. I use that Sim Vibe software. You can also find the link to that in the description. And it just made the simulator come to life. Having that vibration that's like perfectly calibrated. I mean, it's actually a second sound card entirely driving the vibration. So it's not just replicating the, like a subwoofer was. It's not just creating the vibrations from the sound. It's creating the vibrations from what's going on in the game, like especially iRacing. And it just got me hooked the first time I tried it, it was amazing. So I decided it was time for a big project. So the goal here, guys, is I've got five of these butt kicker mini LFEs. I've got a giant amplifier that can drive them perfectly. I've got a 7.1 channel sound card. I'm only gonna use five of the channels for now. Um, a USB sound card that works with the SimVibe software. And all I need to do now is create a series of videos where we're going to use the 3D printer. I'm going to merge together a whole bunch of technology. I'm going to use NetFab, which is an awesome 3D rendering software that I have now. I'm going to use that to basically mock up brackets and print brackets for this to hold these onto the simulator using the existing bolting on the Oboto Revolution. So if you have... Quiet narrator. So if you have an Oboto Revolution, the goal is... At the end of this project, I'm going to go ahead and just publish all those models so you guys can can send them off to a company and have them fabricated yourself. Uh, but the goal is I'm going to 3D model these brackets. I'm going to print the plastic versions to, to mount them and get them placed just the way I like them. And then I'm going to cut up those 3D models. I'm going to go to my friend's house and we're actually going to cut out plate steel. We're going to weld up the brackets and make, make replicas of those brackets out of really hard steel. And then we're going to come back and we're going to mount these all to the Boda Revolution. We're going to do an amp rack to mount it under the seat of the Boda Revolution. We're going to wire the whole thing up. And the goal is to have my simulator so I can slide it right out here in front of these screens, plug in one USB cable, plug in one power cable, and the thing is just going to be amazingly realistic because that Sim Vibe software coupled with this amp is going to allow me to reproduce vibration at four independent wheels and one chassis. Uh, basically one chassis transducer that's up on the steering column so that I will get very, very unique ranges of vibration throughout the whole system to simulate the driving. You know, catching the edge of the road, going off, heavy braking, lockup, stuff like that. I'll be able to feel every little bit of it in the area of the car where I'm supposed to. And I am super, super excited about this. You guys haven't seen a lot of my racing videos lately, mainly because the simulator has been offline. But over the next couple weeks, I'm going to start working on this, and it's going to be a whole series of videos. So if you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button. You're going to see one of these videos appearing about every week or two until the project's done. And uh, it's going to be really cool because for you 3D printer enthusiasts, it's going to be actually fabricating and building parts that actually function and serve a purpose. Uh, for you metal fabricating guys out there, yeah, I'm going to be doing cutting and welding. It's going to be cool. It's actually something I really, really enjoy doing. And for you audiophile nuts out there, this is a hell of an amp, and you're going to see it. I mean, wh what's harder to drive? A little speaker or a freaking audio transducer? These things are power hungry and amp killers. You read on the internet, nothing kills an amplifier like these damn things does. And we're going to drive them hard. So anyways, guys, I hope this video, this little teaser, gave you the start of a nerdgasm. We're not there yet, but more is coming, guys. So make sure you click that subscribe button. Make sure you head over to Facebook and Twitter and you talk to me about it. Um, I would love to get advice from you guys too, because I always take input from my subs. If you guys think I should go about something a different way, or you watch one of my videos like this one and say, oh, maybe you should consider doing this or consider doing this. Give me your feedback. I love your feedback. I read every single comment on every video that I can when I can. So guys, again, hope this gave you a nerdgasm. Till next time. I love you, butt kicker. Oh, Emotiva, you're so sexy. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys. And running over chicanes, all that stuff, all you feel is basically the RPMs of the engine or the base of the game. Now that I have it hooked up this way, every time I touch an apex or chicane, I think that's what they're called, uh, you guys know I'm not the best driver in the world, um, I feel that sensation of going over and bump, 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 bump. Uh, I feel the texture of the road. I feel the RPMs of the engine. And let me tell you, they're very accurate, the RPMs of the engine. It feels, it feels very similar to sitting in a car that's idling.